You know, Old Testament circumcision is the sign of the Old Test, uh, of the Old Covenant. The cross is the is a sign of the New Covenant. Hello. Because the a sign of a covenant talks about what it's all about. You now the cross is a sign to say what it's all about. For God so loved the world. Everybody say, so loved. So loved. You can have love. And, and what the enemy needs to do, he needs to put a cross uh, over every knoll, every huara mampara, you know, that is not serving God. All over so that people can see the cross as a cheap sign. As something cheap. So just, when you see somebody wearing a cross, just pray, God, give him a revelation about what you've done for that man, for that woman. Let them, when they touch that, what they have around their neck, when they touch it, realize that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that I don't have to perish, but I have eternal life as I believe in him. Hello? And they will know God is reaching out to them. God is reaching out to them. Amen. Amen. We put that red cloth there just to say it's all about the blood. The cross is the altar. The altar is nothing without the blood. The cross, there's no word of the cross that can become the power of God unto salvation according to the scripture if it's not for the blood. Hello? The blood is flowing and, the, and the, through the blood you can have an entrance point to the throne of grace. And please remember that. Always remember that. So this place will not be a place for a lot of functions, not for a lot of uh, commercial, what do you call it? Like renting out for a lot of weddings. No, to serve our family, yes. But it will be a house of prayer. Amen. For people to come here where they can have an awesome time with God. So if you and your cell group, you and your family, you and um, some friends, neighbors want to have a time with God here, um, you can just ask for the key and you are welcome to use this place. If you must come for a Saturday for a few hours just to be, then be. After a service day, we have a service day and afterwards you just want to come here and have a picnic, but also a little bit of time with God, then uh, you are welcome. This is, this is for us as the church because at the end of the day, you are the chapel. <sighs> Chappy, <laughs> you are the chapel. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. Oh, but if it's a lady, you cannot say chappy. <laughs> Why did you say that? I don't know what. Okay, but according to the word, Paul says to the Corinthians, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, my brother, my sister, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in you, and you are the temple, not to be forever the temple. No. The temple, the Holy Spirit in the temple, is because Father God has an agenda. Holy Spirit is in you as a temple until the church of Christ is built. Until the home of the Father is built. Let's say, in me, the agenda of God. Therefore, I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. He's living in you because of an agenda. When we see that, that key verse that we have as a church, John 14, verse 23. Everybody say, one, four, two, three. That's how we count. Okay? One, four, two, three. John 14, verse 23. You have it. If somebody loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come and make our home with him. So if he says, if you love me, you will obey my teaching, and then afterwards we will come and live and dwell with you, make our home with you. What does that mean? That first of all, if you love him, you cannot love God. You cannot love God if not first of all, Holy Spirit is in you. So he's not, love God, obey his teaching, and then God will come and come and live in you. No, 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 no. God is already living in you. It's Holy Spirit. You are temple of the Holy Spirit. He's in you. Hello. And the Holy Spirit is working in you the capacity to love God with a true, 
pure love. Is it not the fruit of the Holy Spirit? You can write Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, patience, joy, hello, peace, all that nine facets. Ne? So to love God is a result of the working of the Holy Spirit in you. Are you with me? So when you give your, surrender your life to Christ, you saw that your Father loves you, that God loves you so much, and therefore you surrender to God, you believe, and by faith you are saved. Through faith you are saved. Now you're a child of God, but you don't know how to love God. That's the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, everything, strength, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Greatest, greatest, greatest commandment for you. Hello. So if you love God, obey the teaching. And the essence is all about love. But So you can be a child of God, but you don't know how to love God. If you don't know how to love God, you don't know how to love yourself, you don't know how to love others with a pure love. With a love that is tricky, with a love that is manipulative, with a love that easily can get hurt, and then you're in rejection, then you are in this, then you can be in bitterness, then you can be in fear. But the uncertainty of life, opposite of love, is fear. Hey? 1 John 4 verse 18, if you know it already, don't write it down. Otherwise, write it down. 1 John 4 18 says, perfect love drives out all fear. Fear. Fear of rejection. Fear that you will not make it. Fear. That place where you are not secure, that you cannot be secure. You don't know how to be secure. And with fear, you are in performance. So if, if the fear is there instead of the love of God, if somebody do something wrong to me, I, I'm easily offended. I'm easily offended, I can get easily hurt. I'm easily disappointed. Hello? Oversensitive. All of that, why? Because I don't allow the Holy Spirit to train me, to work in me the love that I must have for God, so that I can have it for myself, and so that I can love others with that love. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to work in us so that the fruit will come forth of love, joy, peace. Amen. You can be a child of God, go to heaven, and on earth never understood how to love God, how to love yourself, and how to love others. And that, yes, you will go to heaven. But if you really love God in that way, there it will, there's, will be a certain quality. It's not a manipulative statement like, um, if you love me, you'll make me breakfast. Hello? Somewhere you tell your wife that, she will just laugh at you. Hello? If you love me, you will, Niku, you will take out all the khaki balls. No, that can be true, maybe. But um, the, uh, uh, when God says, if you love me, you obey my teaching, God is just explaining the quality of love. If this love is real, it's not cheap, then it's quality. And in this quality love, in this pure love, there will be obedience to what I ask of you. There's no cheap love. So it's not a manipulation of, if you love me, go and wash my car. Um, no. It's just explaining the quality love that you're supposed to have. And only Holy Spirit can work it in you. If the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Remember John 14, John 16? Holy Spirit always put the focus on Jesus. Holy Spirit will not speak out of his own, the word says. He will just remind you the words of Christ, and he will explain to you the words of Christ. He will always put the focus on Jesus. So if the fruit of the Spirit will all be all about Jesus, and God is love. So the fruit will be, Christ will be seen. Jesus Christ will be seen. Amen. So the agenda of the Holy Spirit in you as the temple is so that Christ will be revealed, is so that Jesus will be seen, so that the love of God will be seen. Amen. But then with all of that, if he says, you love me, obey my teaching, we will come and make our home with you. 
Jesus says, first of all, He will come and build His church. He will build His church. You are the temple, and He is building His church. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit because the one in you has an agenda. And the agenda is according to what Jesus wants to do. Jesus is building his church. Holy Spirit is living in you with the agenda. You're following the agenda of God that is alive in you. There's an agenda that's alive. There's an agenda that is alive in you. And that is to build God's church with Jesus. Co-workers in your job, in your whatever you do, in your studies, in your relating. To be co-workers with Christ in building the church. On this principle, on this foundation, on this rock, revelation of who Christ is, I will build my church. I, Jesus Christ. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Now you can say, I'm standing against what the devil wants to bring against me. And the gates of hell will be shut. It will not be opened against me. The gates of hell can be opened. Because you need to read context. If you are building a life on the revelation of who Christ is, and you build a life with Him, I will build my church. And then, in the building of the church, the gates of hell cannot prevail. You as individual are. Ah, hell can be released over your life. But over the church, if you understand how to be church, if you understand how to be a wise builder, if you can surrender yourself and, and, and understand how must I give myself to be built into the church, but how must I also, with Christ, build church? Then I'm busy with God's agenda in what I do. Are you with me? You with me? So temple of the Holy Spirit, in the context of the agenda, you are called a living stone. A living stone is not to be a living stone. A living stone is to be built in a spiritual house. Amen. So that after the church is built, what? It will get a new name. After the church, church is built. Remember the word church in the Greek, it means the called out ones. The ones that are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Living stone. Hello. Living stone. Called out of darkness into his marvelous light to be a living stone. No. Called out ones, the ecclesia, that's Greek, the church. And the church is not a living stone. The church is a lot of living stones built in as a spiritual house. There's a level of victory. There's a level of agenda that you can only fulfill if you have the wisdom and understanding of how to be built into a spiritual house. Amen. Amen. Are you going to block the Holy Spirit agenda in you? Or not? If you're working the Holy Spirit agenda in you, you will become more mature in your relating, more mature in how you must be built in to a spiritual house. Especially, my brother, my sister, with more and more into the end time when hell will be released. And the gates of hell will be opened. Over so, such a lot of rubbish. But the church, the church will stand. If the church is not, they are not fighting one another. Hello? But they are standing together. They know how to be built in. There's not the seven bricks fighting one another. Ah, as I believe. What type of thing is that? That's a spook house. What's a spook case? Ghost, ghost, ghost house, whatever. Are uh, you with me? So please don't waste life on earth. You'll go to heaven. But what a, what a hell of a waste of a life if we must fight one another. Oh, God must help me. God must help you. Amen. So that we will understand God's agenda. Praise the error. Okay. All I'm saying is then, you've seen this, uh, this, uh, the, this offense for, for the animals. Who saw that? That there's an a orange line. But that is to keep the animals in. The cows. Okay? You know if you're going to touch that thing, it's going to do that. We, we had that, you know. It's, it's open now. But normally when the guys would come and work here, and 
that line is there, electric fence, so that the cows will stay inside. And when you touch it, bzzz. Now, my brother and my sister, in that what God wants to build in your life, may your prayer be like the bzzz. Everybody say bzzz. Be like that electric fence that you, that you pray over your family, you pray over your city, you pray over the church, you pray over Ukraine. That when the enemy wants to come in like a flood, God will know, God will raise the standard. Amen. And the intercession prayer will be like the bzzz that the enemy cannot come in. And you know on the inside there's a lot of stupid cows even. <clears throat> I'm not saying you. Like with intercession with Abraham, he said, God, if there's 20, will you spare the, uh, spare the city and not bring judgment over the city and destroy the city? But the prayer is God's grace of the church over the, the nation or over the city, over your family. That in spite of all the rubbish, in spite of what is happening, by God's mercy, God is giving that electric fence. And that is when you are praying under the guidance of the Spirit, there is a bzzz in your prayer. There's power. There's a flow of life. But the life is very shocking to the enemy. Very shocking to your flesh. If the cow do the bzzz against the fence, if your finger, like it happened with a few of us, do the bzzz against the fence, it's not like bzzz. I wonder if I must take my finger away now. Now it's just happening in our souls. When the bzzz of the enemy comes. Then for some it's like a kick. You know, they go high with that bzzz. No. But may God help us. That the energy, the electricity that flow through us, the power, will be because of the intercessory prayer. You're a spiritual house, a house of prayer. My house will be a house of prayer. Let's say, my father says... His house will be a house of prayer. We cannot make it a den of robbers. A den of robbers is I can entertain whatever I want. I can entertain my own thoughts. I can entertain my own way of doing. I can entertain all those other stuffies. Then I make it a den of robbers. No, a house of prayer is that in his house there will be protocol. In his house I will position myself accurate. Prayer is positioning. Prayer is, I position myself in respect at the right place, in the right way, before the Lord. In my house, there will be order. In my house, there will be respect. In my house, you will position yourself accurately. That is God, what he is saying when he says, my house will be a house of prayer. In my house, the nations will position them accurately. In my house, the nations will have respect. In my house, my, the nations will have manners. That's my house will be a house of prayer now when you see the chapel think about your own life please you are the chapel you are the temple of the holy spirit you are the chapel and it's not about this building it's about you as a chapel with the holy spirit with a major major agenda to build a home for father god may our house be his home this place can we can crash half of it and what, 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 and it can be empty. It can still be a house, but it will not be a home for somebody to stay in. Hello. Your house, this temple, this chapel, can be a house, but there's a lot of rubbish in. But for it to become a home, may my house be your home. Your home. Hello. Is that I need to clean up a lot of rubbish in my life. Hopefully you also. That we will clean up a lot, a lot of rubbish. Are you with me? So that this temple of the Holy Spirit will be become part of, as a living stone, the spiritual house. And so that in that place, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come and make your home with us. Heaven is not God's home. The nations are the earth. That's his dream home. And that is what Jesus is building. Jesus is calling it the church because the church are called out to be. Called out to be. So church means 
called out to be. To be what? To become the home of God. To become the bride of Christ. So Father gives the church to Jesus as the bride. Jesus gives the church to Father as his home. Awesome. But for that to happen, Holy Spirit is living in you now with that agenda. So whatever we are walking into, whatever you are dreaming about, may it always be in the context of more of you, Lord. Come and make your home in me, with me, through me, please. Amen. Are you with me? Can uh, we use that example again? I have uh, some guys, some of them not here anymore. Where's my drama team that I put on the spot? Okay. Who's Jesus to now in the second service? Oh, it seems to me the hair maybe will do it for us. Oh, we will use that there. Um, you are the man. And uh, who are you again? I can't remember. <laughs> okay. So there's a man. And then, by God's grace, awesome, awesome grace, God comes through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, take his hand where he's looking at that, he's looking at that, he's living according to that. And the Holy Spirit is pointing the hand, your hand, to him and introducing you to Jesus. Okay, shake hands. For everyone who accepts Christ as Lord and Savior, God gives the authority to become a child of God. Amen. And then that, but it's Holy Spirit from here... If it's not Holy Spirit from here, opening it up for him, for this to happen, it cannot happen. It's impossible. So when you are introduced, then Jesus baptizes, <laughs> then Jesus baptizes him in the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, this will become my temple, and Jesus is going to build his church, and I, the Holy Spirit, will, will do according to the agenda. Amen. And so we will walk together. But in the walking together, I will not focus, the Holy Spirit will not focus on himself, but always remind about the words of Jesus and to follow the example of Jesus, to keep the eyes focused on Jesus. Hello. So that we will build according to the pattern and through the Holy Spirit that Jesus is building his church in what you are doing. And so as we're walking together, then... God in me, in here, God wants to visit his church. He wants to make the church his home. So in the process, he, we need to get used to that. And so then Jesus comes. And the scripture says he's knocking on the door. Of the, you know, not of your heart. We use it in, in salvation prayer. That's good. But he's speaking to the seven churches in Revelation. So he's knocking on the door of the church. Knock. And keep on knocking. Because he wants to not just through the Holy Spirit be in you. Christ in you and you in Christ. That principle. But he wants to live with you. That Father, Son and Holy Spirit at the end of the day will come and make their home with you. So Jesus wants to be at home with you. He wants to train you how to be at home with him. And him with you. Hello. So if you open the door, then we as the church. Now I'm a church member, you're a church member. We come and we open the door. And we invite him in. And we will commune. And we will have a time together. So, and what, in what context? When we come together. Thank you. You stand for intercession. Thank you. What are we saying? My brother, my sister, there's a special times that God will want to give you. When two or more agree in my name, when two or more are together in my name, Jesus says, then I will be there. Was he not there in your life? Wasn't he there already? He through the Holy Spirit in your heart, but when you and you agree in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus wants to be there. When we are together in the name of Jesus, God wants to be there in a special way. In your cell group, God wants to be there in a special way. In your, in your, in your family, God wants to be there in a special way. 
when we get into the word, God wants to come in a special way that he did, didn't come when you were alone. You can do your thing alone. No, it's, it's me and the Lord and my workplace there in the field. It's me and the Lord. There, there, it's me. Yeah. But God died, died for the perfect dream of the Father. Jesus died for the perfect world that the Father has. For, remember we said so many times, for God to love the world. No, no, no. We need to hate the world, a certain world. What world are we talking about? For God so loved the dream world that his son came to fulfill the dream of the father. And the dream is of the father is that the nations will become his home. And to fulfill the dream of the father, for the joy set before him, he went to the cross. For to fulfill the dream of the father, father, not my will, but your will be done. Gethsemane. Hello, to fulfill the dream of the Father. So you better love a world, but it's a world that God loves. It's a world where there is grace, a world where you can love one another, where you can forgive one another, where you can have faith and please God by faith, where the principles of God can, can work, where you can have mercy on one another, where you can help one another and follow the principles of the word. If you love me, you'll obey my teaching. You'll have certain quality of life. If you love me, it will not be cheap. You'll obey my teaching. In other words. Hello? And in that place where, there's not, where it's not cheap, we will come and make our home with you. Because your love is, is quality. You allow the Holy Spirit to work a quality love in you. To work a quality, to bring a quality lifestyle. And when you have allowed the Holy Spirit to bring that quality lifestyle, Father can come and we can make a home with you. We can be as, I don't want to say a, a whatever, a, we can stay on the rubbish dump. We can stay on the rubbish dump and decide we will hold on to the Lord or through this tribulation, through all this uh, stuff that we're going through, but it's, we're going through it because of stupidity. Well, may we stop that in Jesus' name. Get out the rubbish dump and deal with the rubbish and leave it the rubbish there and go with the agenda of the Holy Spirit. And may this temple with others become a palace for the King. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Please, my brother. Please, my sister. God, God must help us. But he's going to do that. He's going to do that. And we will have the honor. As the called out ones. When God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who? To declare the praises of him. As a spiritual house. Make, bringing spiritual sacrifices unto the Lord that is pleasing unto him and the spiritual sacrifice of the house you cannot bring the sacrifice on your own but we as a collective body of christ bring a specific unique spiritual sacrifice the spiritual sacrifice that that other church or the crc or the dusty form or the shofar or the whatever church what they bring is unique according to what god has called them to be what God has called our Father's home to be, this specific, unique, spiritual sacrifice we need to bring unto the Lord. You need to be faithful in doing that. We need to find one another. Amen? Because God wants to come in a very special way and have a special, unique meeting with us. And another special, unique meeting with that church. And another special, unique meeting with that church. You cannot compare with one another. That's in the flesh. That's where you don't distinguish the body. Because the whole cannot, body cannot just be an ear or a finger or a toe. Huh? You with me? So please, when you think of this chapel, think about your life. Think about the agenda of God with you through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is there and he will provide, but he will provide in line with the agenda from the Father. He will not provide. You can pray till you, till you die. You can be so exhausted in your prayer life. You can be so exhausted and get discouraged and depressed and negative in your prayer life. 
if I'm not getting in my prayer life with the agenda that Father has. But you lock into the word, you lock into the agenda that Father has for you. Then the Holy Spirit will work. He will work. So you speak forth the word. You pray the word. You believe the word. Scripture says God is awake. Uh, is that the direct translation? God is wakker om sy word te vervul. God is awake to fulfill his word. Is that what the English says? God is so ready. God is so awake to fulfill the word. So that when you speak the word, when you speak the word, the Holy Spirit is so ready. Hello? So ready to fulfill the word. But the enemy and the, and the flesh is, and all those stuff is. And when we start to read the Bible, oh, some people, they go really into a deep sleep. Have you seen that? They can be very excited about some, some other movie or some, but if the movie and the other book excites you more than the word, then don't feel guilty, but change the ways. Hello? And make sure that your spirit is alive. That you allow and don't suffocate with your soul, your spirit. Because your spirit is also so ready and so awake when you are involved with the word. When you are busy with the word. When the word is busy with you and you are busy with the word. I'm not talking about reading the word. I'm talking about being busy with the word. But if you fall asleep when you hear the word, go for go maybe for deliverance. Because there's maybe dom domin uh, dominic, oh, blah, blah. demonic oppression there could be demonic interaction in your life that's uh, the moment you get into the word or somebody speak about the word you're getting very sleepy i'm serious then maybe you must go for deliverance maybe there's demonic oppression <sighs> okay let me see who's sleepy <laughs> okay Okay, you're with me. If, you are, if Christ is living in you, you are crucified with Christ. You don't live. Christ is living in and through you. And Christ is so awake, so awake to fulfill his word. He is wakker oor sy woord om het te vervul. Then when you hear the word and the spirit is in you, you will experience a lightness. You will experience you come alive. Let it be so. May it be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you, Father. I pray that through your spirit, you'll come and speak to every man, every woman in this place. Every man, every woman in this place. Lord, forgive us for ignoring you. But I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will do a deep work in each one of us so that the fruit will come forth of love, joy, peace. That we will know how to love you know how to love ourselves, know how to love others with a love that is pure, that equals, equals obedience, a love that is seen through a lifestyle of obedience. Oh, Lord, help me, help each one of us. We need your mercy, we need your grace so that it can happen, so that it can be true, so that it can be a reality and become a reality in and through us. We trust you for that, Lord. I pray that it will be so for every man and woman in this place. Come and do it. Help us to get out of a selfish focus in ourself. That we will understand as living stones your agenda in us, Holy Spirit. We are your temple. And that means, Lord, we will not fight against the agenda that you have, Holy Spirit, through our lives. So that a home can be built for you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be welcome. Hear, O Lord. Are we preparing for you a resting place? Long and even today have we desired for you to dwell, to dwell among us, Lord, please. May our house be your home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.